Hello, Julie from Technique Tuesday here, and today I am coloring the lovely lavender with colored pencils. I stamped my image on mixed media paper with permanent quick drying ink, and I'm going to go in with a light blue undertone to build the desired color. My plan with this one is to make it sort of a blue lavender color, like the lavender flowers in my mom's front yard. I'm going to get started with small light circles, and I'm sticking to the bottoms of these little pips so that my shadows are sort of blue tinted. I'm going to try and keep the circles pretty light and to stay inside the lines as usual. And of course, I'll do that for the whole thing and end up with blue in all the nooks and crannies of the pips, like this. The next color is going to be lilac, and it's going to go into the tops of the pips and fade into the blue a little bit. And once again, I'll continue that until I get something that looks like this, where the lilac is just at the tops of the little pips. Now I'm going to go in with a darker purple. This is permaviolet. And I'm going to go over the blue here. It's going to turn into a bluey lavender color. I'm going to try and keep my circles pretty light so that when I come back in a couple of steps with my colorless blender, I'll still be able to mix the colors a little bit. And then once again, I can, will continue that until I get something like this, where all of that darkness is in the bottoms. I can go over these colors again later, once they're blended, to sort of darken that up. Next, I'm going to put in little bits of white at the tops of each pips to be a highlight. It also tends to blend the color a little bit, and so it'll make it a little bit smoother. Now I'm going to use my colorless blender to do the same sort of blending thing at the bottoms of the pips. As I said earlier, this will blend the colors as well as smoothing them out a bit. It'll make that blue undertone stand out a little bit more. And as I'm doing this, if I decide that I want to be a little bit darker or whatever, I can go back with Parma Violet and Light Cerulean Blue and intensify the color combination a little bit. I'm going to continue until I have something like this. You can see how it's been all smoothed out in here. And now that I think about how I worked on this one, I think I did go back in with the darker colors just to brighten it up a bit. Now I'm going to start in on the stems and leaves. I'm going to start with spring green. And I'm going to do a light layer on pretty much all of the stuff that's going to be green. On the stems, I'm just going to do light straight strokes because getting the little circles into that little tiny area is pretty difficult. Next, I'm going to go with go in with the apple green, and I'm going to add some of the lighter shadow areas. I'm going to keep going on that until I get something that looks like this, where I've got the first two greens in there. Now I'm going to go in with the olive green. On this one, I actually remembered to put in my little tie. I wanted to do it in purple to sort of bring the color down a little bit. So now I'm going to go in with my olive green, which is my darkest shadow color. 
just a few bits of shadow in the, in the nooks and crannies. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I come up with something that looks like this, my final piece. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you learned something that you can use in your next project. Thanks for watching.